welcome to ATV News. I'm Shalama Lawson. Coming up on today's bulletin, cases of women claiming child support are on the increase in Harare and Chitungwiza. A group of women are braving tough conditions to crush stones in an attempt to earn a living. The engineer who created the Zimcopter is disappointed that his work has not been recognized. Cases of women claiming child support at civil courts are on the increase in Harare and Chitungwiza. Courts are now extending their operating hours to accommodate this influx. Since the introduction of the multiple current system in Zimbabwe in 2009, there has been an increase in the number of women claiming child support from their partners at civil courts. Instead of closing at 10 a.m., most civil courts are now extending their working hours by over two hours to accommodate the rising number of cases to be heard. A Tungiza court official who spoke on condition of anonymity said, since the beginning of this year, over 600 cases have so far been heard compared to only 507 for the war of last year. Tondra Chivasa of Seke village in Tungiza attributed the rise in child support cases to infidelity. <laughs> Linda Mujizwa, a 19 year old girl from Seke who was impregnated at 17, said it is a waste of time to clear maintenance from an unemployed partner. <laughs> Chief Chiafa Kunaka Seke said, on a monthly basis, his court presides over eight maintenance cases, most of which are then referred to civil courts. <laughs> Meanwhile, another source from Arare Civil Court said they have recorded 3,040 cases last year compared to 2,704 in 2010. Harare Civil Court alone is receiving over 50 cases a day. Some men are refusing to pay child support for their children because they cannot prove that they fathered those children. His paternity tests are expensive. Women are flocking to courts to claim child support. They are also single fathers who should be getting maintenance but are too shy to approach the courts. A group of women in Chitungwiza are braving tough conditions to earn a living. The stone crushers are breaking up stones and rocks in the baking sun in order to provide for their families. Some women living in Chitungwiza, a town 35 kilometers from Harare, are crushing stones for resale to earn a living. ATV visited these women who brave the broiling sun and freezing temperatures on a daily basis to crush huge rocks into three-quarter stones using hammers. The stones are then sold to people constructing houses in the area. Memory Kaitano said she joined a group of stone crushers to supplement her husband's make salary. <laughs> Uh, 
the crushing of stones leaves these women exhausted with blistered and cracked hands. Their eyes also suffer as a result of stones entering them. <laughs> A full bar of stones costs two dollars, although customers are not always readily available. On a good day, the women earn six dollars, which translates into a monthly income of one hundred and twenty dollars. Most low income earners in high density suburbs who cannot afford to buy three quarter stones on the market, which sell for around seventy dollars a truckload, resort to buying on the informal market. Another woman, Grace Sofas, also crushes huge rocks into tiny pebbles. Alongside her husband, said the work is so taxing that sometimes she weeps. <laughs> They said life of grace is the same tale of Lucy Manyaze, who also crushes stones for survival. These women also play cat and mouse games with environmental management authority officials who accuse them of destroying the environment. More and more houses are being built using stones that have been crushed by women like Grace who taught and a living from stones. The engineer who created the well-known helicopter known as Zimcopter is disappointed that his talent for engineering has not been recognized. ATV went to meet him and find out more. Daniel Chingoma shot to prominence in 2003 after he assembled a helicopter which never took to the skies. The helicopter, popularly known as Zimcopter, became an instant crowd puller, especially at the Harare Agricultural Show where it was on exhibition every year. Almost a decade later, Chingoma, who never studied engineering, is a disappointed man because his talent is not being recognized. As However, the helicopter had to be removed from the exhibition park after Chingoma failed to pay renters for it. The self-styled engineer now looks forward to college students doing further research on his projects. My university, the mamu ma technical universities, kana ma colleges. Chingoma's almost 1,000 square meters yard, which has since been transformed into a workshop, displays his vision. He makes water pumps, grinding mills, scotch cards for sale. Whether Chingoma's helicopter will one day fly is a story for another day. Now we cross to Michael Mambo, who has a roundup of the biggest stories in today's papers. Evening. Welcome to tonight's section of What's in the Headlines, where we talk about some stories doing the rounds in the papers. I start off with the Herald. Uh, the top story is about the Prime Minister and his court battles. The headline is Lokadia outsmarts Changrai in court again. Prime Minister Morgan Changrai lost a bid to have the maintenance claim lodged against him of US 15,000 by his wife, Miss Lokadia Karimatsenga, struck off the roll. Argument for his, by his counsel was that the summons was not issued properly. However, the Harare Civil Court Magistrate, Mr. Ruben Mukavi, ruled that the application was properly before the courts and that the hearing should be held. On a business note, Mr. S Mr. Lin Lin, the ambassador from China, said trade between Zimbabwe and 
China would, by the end of the year, reach one billion mark, which is quite good for business. This was at, he, at the reception to mark the 63rd anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China, held at the Chinese Embassy. On the political front, the Herald says we are ready for polls. This came about after President Mugabe's urgent chamber application in the High Court, seeking to extend the deadline to proclaim by elections. Basically, it's more economic sense to have harmonized elections. Comrade Didmas Mtasa of ZANOPF, who is the Secretary for Administration, said right now we are putting in place financial resources to use in this election. However, the MDC spokesman, Dr. Douglas Mawonza, said his party was not concerned about the proclamation of election dates. For the MDC, the question is not so much about when elections can be held, but conditions under which the elections are to be held. Going to our neighbor, South Africa, the headline is Wildcat Strikes th Threatens SA Economy. Basically, President Jacob Zuma, who is attending the 67th section of the United Nations General Assembly, stated that it is through negotiation that they're going to try and solve what is currently happening in South Africa, and we do hope they solve it. My story of the week is in the standards. The story is about soldiers being arrested for extorting rank marshals at least 10 soldiers were arrested last week on allegations of assaulting and demanding money from rank marshals and touts in Harare Central Business District. This uh, is the story in the standard. The reason why I picked it is because apparently the Tauts, there was a running battle between touts and soldiers and at the end of the day soldiers Towels were beaten, soldiers arrested, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you can read more about it on the Standard website. Thank you very much. On a lighter note, Winky D is alive and kicking. Ninja President lives on. Thank you. We have another weekend of exciting English Premier League football coming up. Here to tell us more is ATV's football specialist, Liam Thorpe. That's right, Shalimar. It's that time of week again. We have another fascinating round of matches in the English Premier League to look forward to, with all the big sides in action tomorrow. It's been a difficult start to this year's campaign for champions Manchester City. Their defence looks vulnerable and has been leaking goals. They travel to Craven Cottage to face a Fulham side who are sitting above City in the league, and they're looking good. So I think this one could result in a lively draw. The key man on the day could be Fulham striker Dimitar Berbatov. The new signing is already looking like a star in Fulham colours, and could do his old Manchester United teammates a favour. United themselves have a difficult home game against Tottenham Hotspur. Spurs have had a slow start to the campaign, but have recently started to put some good results together. United have won four on the bounce, and I think just because this game is at Old Trafford, they might edge it. The key man on the day could be Wayne Rooney. The England man is back from injury and will be keen to make up for lost time. Liverpool have had their worst start in the league for 101 years. But they did play well last week against Man United, and they're clearly growing in confidence. They travel to Norwich, where I think they will pick up their first win of the season. The key man should be Luis Suarez. He's not been on his best form this season, but if he can play to his potential, he will cause any defence in the league some real problems. Now the big game this weekend sees Chelsea take on Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. Both teams have had pretty good starts to the season. Chelsea have a wealth of attacking options and for once Arsenal look quite good in defence. The main man could be Chelsea captain John Terry, who was this week given a four-game ban and a hefty fine for racially abusing QPR defender Anton Ferdinand, but he's set to play tomorrow and he could well be key. Now, we've been asking for your comments on this one to see how you think it'll go. Matthew Badwin Changa says Arsenal will win because they have a better defence than last season. Chirwa Chanzai is so confident of a Chelsea win, he's gone for 5-0 whereas Tauri Magadair thinks it will be a closely fought draw. Now, I'm also going for a draw in this one, but one man that might disagree with me is my uh, ATV colleague and lifelong Arsenal fan, Michael Mambo. Now, thanks for joining us, Michael. Thanks, Liam. So, presumably, you think it's going to be a hefty Arsenal win? Yes, Liam. I think Arsenal are going to win because every player is going to be out there fighting hard, whereas in previous seasons you had uh, a situation whereby 
one player would have been guaranteed a starting place for almost every game in the season, whereas now every player has to fight hard so a player cannot mess up. You have got Theo Walcott, fair and fine, you may say it's a contract situation, but he can't get in the team. You've got uh, Chamberlain, who's now an England regular, he can't get in the team as well. That's how stiff the competition is. When I look at the Chelsea team, it's more or less the same faces. So we are going to win. So that's what Michael thinks. A big win for Arsenal. But what do you think? Keep your comments coming into us at the ATV Facebook page. One thing that's for sure, it's going to be a great game and a great weekend of Premier League action. Thank you for joining us. Have a good weekend.